Hello and welcome to this Cartoon Smart video tutorial. We are going to be talking about uh, selection and anchor display uh, in this little series here. Um, this particular video is about control click to select object behind or command click to select objects behind. Now there's a difference if you're um, in Windows it's going to be control click if you're in uh, on the Mac it's going to be command click. So I have a document open that I'm going to use. I might use these characters to demonstrate. Maybe not. Sometimes it gets a little complicated. You know, they're usually they're pretty busy as far as all the objects in them and stuff like that. But we'll see. We'll see how I feel as time goes on, moment by moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, if you want to open a document with these characters in it, uh, I've created one for you. Uh, go into your Exploring Illustrator CS5 folder and you should find a folder in there called Objects Used in Videos. So find one that says Stinky Foot AI. Alright, go ahead and open that if you want. If not, you can just create a new document. Just go File New and accept whatever whatever it says. It's fine. Or you can just watch and follow along. These, these things are a little... Um, short videos anyway. So, uh, if you're uh, on the Mac, you're going to find your preferences under Illustrator. In Windows, you're going to find it under Edit. So, here on the Mac, I'm going to go to Preferences, Selection, and Anchor Display. Okay, so, we have this option in here called Command Click to Select Objects Behind. Right now, I don't have that selected, and let's go ahead and see here. Uh, it, go ahead and grab like a rectangle or something from your tools palette. If you have something else showing like any of these objects it's fine. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm just going to go ahead and do the rectangle for now. Okay, I have a black rectangle. We'll go ahead and double click on this little swatch here and I'm going to change let's change my color a little bit. Yeah, I don't like that. Let's do something different. A little darker. Uh, you know what? Maybe a little bit. I'm indecisive today. Okay, yeah. Let's go with that. Okay, so I'm going to actually just duplicate that and change it a bit. And make it a little bit bigger. So now we have a situation where we have one object that's over the other object. And say you're working in a document where it, it would be, for some reason, it would be a bad idea to go ahead and move that object to select the one beneath it. As it is right now, I would have to actually do that. Or if it's on another layer, you could lock that layer or hide that layer or whatever. But for this purpose, everything is on the same layer. And I could select both of them by doing this. And I would have access, you know, I could go ahead and move them around together. You can see the uh, the one underneath it by the stroke. But say that wasn't practical, uh, or actually, you know what I could do? I could hold down my shift and just deselect the one that was in the front. And now I could go ahead and move that object if I wanted to with the keyboard stroke. But there's another way of doing it, uh, which is what we're talking about here. So, as it is right now, if I select that object, the one beneath it does not get selected because this one is kind of getting in the way. So, go back to your preferences, selection and anchor display, and now go ahead and enable the option here. Click OK. Right. Now, if I hold down, I'm on the Mac, so I'm going to hold down Command, and you notice my pointer turns it changes. So, in Windows you're going to be using control. So hold down control and you'll notice that your cursor changes. Right? Now, keep it keep it down. Just keep it pressed. And when you click once on the top object, you'll notice a little arrow or a little corner thingy appears next to your cursor. Now, I'm still holding the control or command key down. I'm going to click one more time now you see how it selects the one beneath it as well. 
Now, the thing is, um, I released the mouse button when I clicked again. So if I go to do something, it's going to still grab the top one. Undo. So I'm holding down the command key and I'm going to click. I'm going to click once again, but I'm not going to release the mouse button. I'm keeping the mouse button pressed down. Then I'm going to drag over. And you can see I selected the object that was beneath. Now you can keep doing that over and over again. Let's take a um, another object. We'll make a star. And no, we won't, apparently. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and, OK, put the star. I'm going to drag out a star. Go to my direct uh, general selection tool and move this guy over. I'm going to change the color. Okay. Now, let's do the same thing again. But we want that bottom object. I'm going to hold down the command or control. And I'm going to click once. You see the arrow pops up. I'm still holding the key down. I'm going to click again and it selected the object beneath the star. Now, I'm going to select the object below that, the smaller rectangle. Uh, the thing is, is to not let go of the mouse button when you get to the object that you're trying to select. So I'm going to click one more time, and it's now selected the bottom rectangle. So I have not released the mouse button yet. And I'm going to go ahead and see, I was able to select the bottom object that way. So that's what that's what that feature is all about. That's what that option is all about. If you're ever in there, it's right there. Okay. Now, I feel like I kind of brought these characters out on stage for for absolutely no reason. So let's go ahead and just at least do something with them. <laughs> okay. So I want to select this woman's head from beneath the hair. So I'm over the hair. I'm going to command click one two, got the face or the head or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Let's see, let's do, let's grab his leg from beneath the pants. I'm holding down the command or control button. Click once, two, and I have the foot. So, let's see where else can we, you get the point, but I want to at least do something with these people. You know, right here, it might be a good spot to do that. Or right down here, actually. Yep. One, two, three. Nothing else below it. I guess it goes to the back. I mean, goes back to the first object you selected. Right? It's. You know, you probably didn't see that because I was off the screen. Okay. <clears throat> right. One, two, three. I'm still holding the button down, the command or control. And. After you've gotten to the the object that's all the way on the bottom or in the back, and you do it one more time, it's going to come back to the first one that you selected. So it's going to make it so all the way through. So that is the demonstration of select objects behind, holding down the command or control key on your keyboard. Let's see, I'm just playing around right now just to see what's below things. You know, sometimes I, I'm drawing something, and I'll have little objects get that get lost behind other objects. And if you're worried about file size, you don't want a whole bunch of stray objects hidden behind other things. So sometimes you find objects that way using the method I just shown. Okay, so I hope that was useful to you. Um, I know I find it useful. I find it very useful. I use it uh, a fair amount now that I've discovered it. So, for Cartoon Smart, I'm Brian Zakowski. Thank you for watching.